So the desert bighorn at the Lado, far west Texas, is a really cool animal. Nearly went extinct years ago. Lost all the all the wild sheep from disease, uh, predation, uh, and the sheep herders were eating them for a food source because they weren't going to eat their cash crop of their domestic sheep. So it it's been many years, huge recovery effort from. Parks and Wildlife, BRI, Cell Ross, Tech, everybody else that's been involved. So again, it's been a long process. Everything happens at a slow pace in the desert. But now to see them doing really well out here is incredible. The most important thing to be about mule deer and seeing that old buck is how lucky he is to be here. As you're aware, mule deer are the only big game species in North America or in the United States on the decline. Mule deer are in trouble. I want to spend my time in this arena doing something to help that. I've enjoyed mule deer my entire life, but I've taken them for granted. That's what fascinates me, to be able to uh, spend my time and share it with others in order to bring about positive change. That's why I like doing what I do. I'm in this position not by design, it's almost by default. Everything I've ever done in life, I've come to a fork in the road, flipped a quarter in, whichever it lands, and that's, that's how I go. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, when I was working on my master's, out here at Sol Ross, I, I hooked up with the Texas Parks and Wildlife guys and met them at Elephant Mountain. The Elephant Mountain was set primarily for the restoration of bighorn sheep, and so it, everything we did it revolved around bighorn sheep, whether it be hunts or guzzlers, uh, you know, translocations, captures, those kinds of things. Uh, but everything revol revolved around uh, bighorn sheep. Since 2010, we've captured and translocated nearly 400 animals uh, to distinct areas in the state. We've been able to restore sheep to three mount ranges, which had been void of sheep since their extirpation over 50 years prior. So we'd, we're making good progress. Everything comes with challenges and we've been able to overcome those challenges. And, and luckily we're in a position right now where we have surplus animals in some areas and it allows us to do these, you know, these kinds of projects. So again, there's, there's lots of moving parts uh, to, this, to this project and hopefully it will render lots of good information that will allow us to further manage the sheep. So we're working on a project now um, that's never been done, three species, private lands. So we are collaring a 40 a bighorn, 40 mule deer, and 40 odd dead. And so now with the satellite collars, we will be able to track them and see exactly when they're moving and why they move. Uh, additionally, we're taking samples. So every capture that we've ever done since the program was initiated, we've got samples for those sheep. That way we can do comparisons uh, from here, from Nevada, from Arizona. And just see if these are metapopulations or not. And we'll be able to find all of that out over the next two years. That's the life of these collars. And then most of them will have ear tags so we can keep monitoring them over years to come. Uh, this is the first of its kind, especially because we're doing all three species. Uh, it's certainly shaping up to be a really great project. I would like to be able to drive down a road that I went down 30 years ago and counted 50 mule deer. I'd like to see those same 50 set of eyes looking at me at night. I would like to bring those numbers back to where they were. People are the only way that we can solve the problem. If we educate people, and this is what they can do, in some cases it might be Atlanta, Georgia. There's people in there that will never see a mule deer, will never hunt a mule deer, but they'll come and they'll contribute their hard earned dollars uh, in order for us to put on the ground to make sure that that species still exists somewhere else in the world. That's, that's a magical story.